sound extrusion was being carried out over a hundred years ago in the form of collapsible lead tubes, bottle caps, and similar small cup-like shapes. In recent years, the introduction of the Critol Luxfer cold extrusion process has made possible the production of thin-walled extrusions of considerable length from aluminium or aluminium alloy billets. Successful operation of this process requires presses of an advanced design and which are capable of meeting certain exacting requirements. This is a fielding hydraulic 500 ton cold extrusion press, a fully self-contained installation incorporating its own accumulator system and supply pumps. The result of considerable experimental and research work, this press fulfills all the conditions necessary to carry out cold extrusion efficiently and economically. Presses of this type are manufactured in an extensive range of powers from 200 tons and are patented and registered under the trademark Hypacta. In presses of this type, three basic requirements have to be met. First, the length of the ram stroke must be accurate and adjustable. This is brought about by means of the screwed stop nut fitted to the rear of the main ram. Second, the pressing stroke must be fast but controlled the billet being subjected to the instantaneous application of full press power. Finally, as the tolerances in the tool assembly have to be accurately maintained, a precision-built sub-press is incorporated. Unique design features, together with automatic billet loading and ejection of the extruded section, result in a high throughput rate far in advance of the conventional type hot extrusion press. Speeds of up to eight extrusions per minute with 10 inch long billets are well within the capacity of this machine. The high pector cuts production costs of extruded products. Tubes from this press have similar mechanical properties and surface finish as those that have been hot extruded and passed through draw dies five or six times. A high degree of accuracy is maintained on concentric and parallel limits while surface finish lends itself to decorative and protective treatment. The hydraulic medium is supplied from a fielding electrohydraulic accumulator system. The accumulator water level is maintained by five fielding pumps arranged in banks of two and three respectively. The full series of pumps is only required when extruding solid billets of maximum length. Pilot lamps fitted on the control tube and on a panel at the control station visually indicate the water level to the operator. The fielding H3 type three throw pumps are controlled by thruster operated bypass valves which are energized by the rise and fall of the water level acting on suitably positioned detector electrodes which switch in a series of relays. The accumulator control panel houses the electrical relays which operate the water level control, pump bypass valves and also the various safety interlocks. The accumulator incorporates an outlet stop valve block which isolates the system on shutdown and prevents excessive drawing off or filling of the water bottle. The water level detector relays in the accumulator control panel enable any single unit to be removed and taken to a workbench where it can be checked and tested. A spare relay is also incorporated, which can be used as a replacement. The control desk is sighted to give the operator an overall view of the press and is designed to indicate to him all the sequences that take place during a pressing cycle. Not only is the desk used as a control panel, but it also houses the electrical relays that operate the servo valves of the hydraulic system. The signals which bring in the relays are provided by a uniselector which in turn receives its signals from the press interlocks. Four methods of operation are available when speed or tool setting is carried out. Selection is made by a hand lever, giving hand control, single step, single cycle or continuous automatic operation. The three selectors in the center of the panel are to operate the billet support, stretch mechanism, and push section when required. In hand control, the press interlocks are rendered inoperative, allowing press movements to be selected out of phase. Single step movements are controlled from a selector button, which is repeatedly pressed until a full cycle is completed. As a final check before continuous operation, 
a single automatic cycle can be carried out. As the press moves through its cycle, pilot lamps indicate the operation of the interlocks. Upon completion of speed and tool setting, the press is ready for operation under auto-continuous control. The selector switch is moved to the auto-continuous position and the cycle start button operated. Each stage of the cycle is indicated to the operator by the interlock and sequence pilot lamps. The high throughput rate of the high packer is brought about by careful synchronization and overlapping of the press motion. In order to illustrate this, the following sequence is shown with a press operating under single step control. The pneumatically operated billet loader enters the billet into the press where it is flicked by the loading arm onto the pilot of the tool set. When the billet loader is fully withdrawn, the container moves forward to seal against the die face. Combined power saving and main cylinder pressure moves the main ram forward against the pressure of the holding cylinder. The holding pressure is released and full press load is applied to the billet. The ram speed is recorded and used to carry out speed setting, which is preset on the dial type indicators of the main control valves. The grips close on the extruded section, the container unseals and moves back with the main ram and at the same time the grips open. When the container and ram are just clear, the shear will operate to sever the discard. As the shear moves down, the ejector gate extracts the extrusion from the die, drawing it to the full extent of its runout and depositing it through the open guide tube. On completion of ejection, the cycle will have advanced to the container sealed position. The high speed of operation of the fielding hypactor is clearly demonstrated in the following autocontinuous sequence. The billet loader is designed to accommodate hollow and solid billets from one and a half inches to five and a half inches diameter. Provision is made to locate hollow billets having a non-circular hole in correct relation to an irregular shaped pilot in the tool set. A hinged flap incorporated on the loader head permits the loader to withdraw when a long billet is projecting from the container face after being loaded. The loading arm is automatically operated by a solenoid air valve. A push button is provided on the control desk to repeat the loading movements in the event of a billet not freely entering the container bore due to burrs or other irregularities. The sub-press assembly is fitted with adjustment mechanisms to ensure its accurate alignment with the press center line. It can also be lifted clear of the main framework when inspection and maintenance is to be carried out. The opening guide tube assembly comprises an operating unit and extension units giving a total length of 36 feet between the press frame and the housing for the stretch mechanism. To suit different length extrusions, the extension units enable the stretch mechanism to be positioned from 4 feet to 37 feet in 12 inch increments from the end of the press frame. The whole of the guide tube and stretch equipment is mounted on a runway consisting of spaced channel sections situated at floor level which total 45 feet in length. Provision is made for the future extension of the runway. The air supply to the pneumatically operated guide tube units is supplied from points fitted with quick action coupling located in pairs at intervals of 8 feet. Whether the end product be simple tubular shapes or the complicated thin-walled aluminium sections used by the architectural industry, automobile manufacturer or the builders of nuclear power stations, the fielding hypactor is capable of meeting all demands where extrusions are required accurately formed and at an economical cost.